this is the second part of the Emperor's No Clothes, a metaphor. A fairy tale written by Hans Christian Andersen, reminding us of the hypnosis of an emperor and his audience, an emperor pretending to wear a most luxurious costume, that's linked to the eyes of those who wait in high expectation to see the emperor arrive with his members of staff, ready to cheer and praise the parade, presented in good cheer, or so they thought. Until a small boy suddenly calls out, look, the emperor has no clothes on, leaving the audience in stunned silence. The parade is a charade. The dressmakers weave a web of lies around the emperor's eyes and ears and those of his members of court. We are the most qualified in our profession. We know how to dress you in a most luxurious costume fit for a grand emperor. All that is needed to expose the hypnosis, the lie, is a small child calling, look, the emperor has no clothes on leaving the audience in a stunned silence, hardly capable of believing, and yet knowing the truth. I could have chosen the fairy tale of the Pied Piper of Hamelin, but the Emperor's new clothes fairy tale is closer to the world and lifestyle of those who seem to think they're the puppet masters, reminding some of us of the wizard from the land of Oz, making the most of his performance Fata Morgana's in empty air, hiding behind his curtains. These puppet masters, when they are for real, seem to hold the strings that make us dance to their tune. Second chapter. What happened in our world from the start of the pandemic? As far as I'm noticing, since the start of 2021, and I study the conditions in America, Britain and the Netherlands, the frenzy of management caused by a min minuscule particle that isn't even alive by itself, a virus, people begin to inform and educate themselves, comparing notes, critical questions, statements and protests in the streets of towns, populations becoming impatient, doubtful and anxious, angry and having trouble believing their ears when they hear and see evidence of lies, manipulation, censorship, violence by police, military, propaganda of fear and unnecessary loss of lives. A huge trigger of anger when people's gut feeling tells them that it's not right. Something is not right. How we first lived with question marks, gradually growing concerned, how we witnessed footage from smartphone videos, television shows, and listened to interviews, talk shows, how medical reports were presented, and reports with the result of research by virologists, microbiologists, vaccine designers, <coughs> reports of doctors and nurses working with patients recommendations for treatment, chemical or natural. Quite a number of facts and evidence that are now known at the start of 2021, <clears throat> the start of March now, were unknown and unheard of a year ago. Personally, I'm always curious and eager to find out about how life evolves in all sorts of different ways and expressions and what makes us humans tick the following quote of Socrates is one of my favorite ones. The belief that we should look for what we do not know makes us bigger, bolder and more entrepreneurial than the idea that we cannot and should not search for what we do not know. And for that I want to fight as long as I can, in word and deed. Notice how at the start of 2020, most of the world was running around like chickens without a head, in panic and confusion about how to manage a pandemic, pandemic in the making. 
which the Chinese government deliberately ignored, for reasons some say not wanting to lose face. Chinese doctors warned in December 2019 that unusual symptoms were found in some patients in hospital and no decision was made to investigate their reports and this condition in patients. Shortly after, we watched Chinese citizens falling flat on their face in the streets, as if the virus was killing them in an instant. These videos were shown all over in the internet cloud, the wishing well of wonders, as I tend to call it. And some people felt threatened by the unknown cause about which everybody was guessing and talking, quarreling. Others tend to think that this is a false flag operation, suggesting to the Western world that disaster had struck China and that it soon would strike the Western world as well. Gradually, the virus wave began to spread all over the world. China advised the US to keep the airlines open, but President Trump and his team knew better and closed all air traffic with China. If this hadn't happened, the situation in the US would have been far worse from an earlier phase in this pandemic. Since March 2020, almost a year ago, with the announcement of a worldwide pandemic by the WHO, the World Health Organization, a construction based on the decision to place COVID-19 on list A, the list of serious diseases such as Ebola, polio, malaria and typhus. I've lived with a hunch. I can't explain but it is still very strong that around the same month of the year 2021, maybe a little later, the whole world will experience a surprise event that nobody could have dreamed of or could have predicted. The end of the pandemic, the end of restrictions, a freedom of expression and movement. Chapter 3 how did we react? What solutions, rem remedies and forms of management were chosen and tried? The psychological impact on all of us worldwide was growing anxi anxiety with question marks in some, denial of danger in others, fear for the end of the world being upon us, and no doubt sadness in those who lost loved ones, and misery for those who weren't allowed to be with them in the last moment of their lives. Medical staff in hospitals worked in a frenzy, protected by face masks, suits, gloves and regular disinfection protocols. At the end of day, their faces showed the marks of the mask and other coverings. Testing was called for and they were introduced. Test streets opened, car traffic had to line up for swap tests, airports, borders. The PCR test was introduced, about which many voices report that they were, are not and were not accurate to this day. The inventor of this test has described this test as valuable in laboratory conditions only, and that it's not meant to diagnose flu conditions in human beings or any other infectious condition, human beings that are alive. He meant. The swab test is a method where a swab is pushed into the nose, passing the blood-brain barrier. What this treatment does and causes is leaving a passageway for the virus to enter the physical system through the nose into the lungs. The swab paves the way, so to speak, for a higher risk of infection. Many debates have flared up about what causes disease, with on one side those who follow the germ theory of Louis Pasteur, and on the other side those who follow the terrain theory of Antoine Bichon. Both are Frenchmen, presenting opposite views. I leave a link with an explanation about those both views in the description of this video. What showed up in many conclusions in results of research in management of social distancing, travel restrictions, working at home, the closing of schools, of hospitality work, 
the closing of businesses, shops, theatres, leisure centres, in short, the lockdown, is that many of them showed contradicting elements and even illogical ones, which sparked criticism in virologists, lawyers, nurses and doctors, and many that are part of the common people. Some countries chose to continue for a large part with normal life, freedom of movement, working at the office with the children at school. Restaurants were open, pubs were open. They did well and some did not so well. What confusion and questions remain to this day about cause and effect? Choice of solutions, of remedies, all related to this pandemic. A Dutch doctor testifies in an interview with a Dutch lawyer, sharing her feelings of awkwardness about having to sign the death certificate with COVID-19 as the cause of death, while the patient died of different causes. I've listened to similar testimonies from nurses and doctors in the US and Britain. Many of those who testified, some nurses filmed the hospital room when discussions were heated about the choice of treatment. Some of them lost their job and their income. Many members of the medical staff working in separate hospital rooms and in IC units for these patients were working against the clock for no one actually knew how to figure out and follow the protocols, choose the proper treatment and even be allowed to treat the patient with it. I'm not 100% sure of it, but it seems that those patients of a very old age were labelled as no priority over younger patients. I've read reports of witnesses who heard the doctor asking a very old patient, some in a weak condition, to sign a form and declare to not want to receive resuscitation due to the need for beds. I assume that one of you who listen now may have experiences with loved ones friends or colleagues in hospital for treatment. In essence, we were in uncharted territory, combined with being in shock and in a survival mode. Clear thinking is very difficult in that state of being. This time it seemed almost as if the doctor knew as much as the patient about the cure. Many patients were reported dying on ventilators and medical staff testified that many died of conditions that were not related to the flu. Nobody was experienced. Nobody knew. Nobody had a clue, or so it seemed. Nobody, pun intended. The question remains if that was deliberately orchestrated. Many, many questions are still in need to be answered, I believe. It was as if all over the world the wheel needed to be invented again. In April 2020, President Trump re recommended hydroxychloroquine, a malaria remedy, remedy that is used for over 50 years and still is used to prevent and cure the flu symptoms. Saving lots of patients with zinc on the side. Nowadays, March 20, 2021, this beneficial remedy is acknowledged by the Dutch Self-Care COVID-19 support group. You'll find a link in the description. And right now, questions are asked in the Dutch parliament why such a remedy with other remedies like Evermectin aren't used to treat patients. Chlorine, dioxide, an oxidizer sold as water purifier is a remedy flying over the counter now. It's an excellent remedy to treat infection and prevent further results of infection like the flu. It can be used on the skin and it can be used internally. 
One supplier that I know of, know of in Europe, in Germany, can't deliver quickly enough now, with the orders coming in. I'll put a couple of valuable links explaining this remedy in the description. I believe and I sure hope that we are moving slowly toward a tipping point where the Emperor falls flat on its face. If what I am following is correct, it seems that heaps of skeletons are falling out of the closet without clothes on.